Brackle sat on the metro platform, watching people pass by, each lost in their own world. The next train was due in a few minutes, she could tell just by observing the passengers preparing to board. But that wasn't why Reichel was there. Mommy, I'm hungry and my leg hurts, came the frail, desperate voice of David, her six-year-old son, who lay weakly on her lap. Rackle knew she had no money left after spending everything on lunch. She placed an empty cup in front of her and began singing a song that was close to her heart. The people, captivated by her sweet voice, seemed unaware of her pain. Most were engrossed in their phones, some searched for a coin or two to drop into her cup, while others didn't even glance her way. Rachel didn't mind their indifference, she was singing for alms, hoping to provide for her son. She hummed a familiar tune, her eyes fixed on the dirty floor beneath her. Her weary gaze and somber expression accompanied the melody she had always sung to lull her little boy to sleep. God, please help me overcome my struggles. Even if all these people put in a coin, I'd have enough to buy my son dinner and some ointment, she thought while singing. A few minutes later, Rachel heard some coins being tossed into her cup. She didn't smile and looked up painfully to thank the person through her tears. It was understandable that she was just another desolate homeless person with a child, using her talent to make a living. Several minutes passed as Rachel kept singing the song again and again. At first, nothing seemed unusual. The train arrived and people started boarding it, while a few others got off, flocking toward the main exit. Rackle took a little break to see if her son was all right. David, darling, just a few minutes more, and then we'll move from here, all right? David puffed heavily. He was hungry and in pain due to his injured leg. Two days ago, David had a terrible fall while playing in the same parking lot where the mother and son usually slept on a stack of old cardboard gathered from the dumpster. The train sped past the platform, jolting Rackle back to the present. She coughed, adjusted her voice, and started to sing the melody again, but this time a wealthy man who had just gotten off the train was eerily drawn to her voice and the lyrics. It was 27-year-old Jeremy who, for some reason, realized that he'd heard the song before. Heard it before, but how? Who's singing it? And how do they know the lyrics that only my granny, sister, and I knew? He wondered, approaching where Rackle was. As Jeremy neared the spot, tears slowly rose to his eyes, Rackle was immersed in her sweet melody when a long shadow of a man fell on her, distracting her. My God, Rackle, is that you? Jesus, I'm so sorry, sobbed Jeremy, falling to his knees. Please forgive me for doing this to you, sister. Rackle's heart began to throb faster, it felt like it wanted to burst out of her chest because, at that moment, all of Rackle's past pain came rushing back. Jeremy, is it you, brother? She cried. <laughs> The siblings stared at each other in tears, reflecting on the one mistake Jeremy made 18 years ago that cost Rackle more than just her happiness. When Jeremy and Rackle were little, they lost their parents in a car crash. They moved in with their grandma Alice, who cared for them in their parents' stead. She was all they had. Whenever the siblings were depressed, thinking about their parents, she often sang them a beautiful melody to comfort them. Sing this song whenever your heart feels heavy, and you'll feel much better," she often said, cradling Jeremy and Rackle in her arms. The family was happy with the little they had. They had no troubles in their paradise until one day, elicited of a heart attack. Her loss was unbearable, and the kids were sent to a shelter before they could even mourn properly. It was there that Jeremy got a new beginning to mend his life. A wealthy couple adopted him while Rackle stayed behind. Nobody wanted her because she limped. They only saw her disability, not her heart that longed for love and care. Rackel was crushed, but she was comforted when Jeremy promised to return for her. But who knew that he would break her heart along with that promise? I promise to come back for you, sister. Stay strong and wait for me. I'll come and take you with me, nine-year-old Jeremy promised before bidding a painful goodbye to his sister. That fateful day was the last time Rachel saw Jeremy. He never came back for her. Jeremy was lured by his newfound wealthy life and slowly forgot about his little sister and his promise to her. He assumed someone else would adopt her, but fate had something else in store for poor Rackle. Rackle left the shelter at 18, filled with hopes of a bright future as she fell in love and dreamed of building a family. Young, beautiful, and deeply in love, she trusted her boyfriend completely.
but her world shattered when he abandoned her upon learning of her pregnancy. Data stated, Rachel decided to live for her baby, using her pain as fuel to keep going. Despite her best efforts, she couldn't find a job due to her lack of experience and her disability. Life's challenges mounted, but holding baby David for the first time gave her the strength to carry on. Homeless and desperate, Rachel took to metro and bus stations, singing a song her grandma taught her, hoping to earn enough to keep her son fed. And this is what I've been doing to raise my son, she cried. Jeremy's guilt-ridden conscience began questioning him and he had no answer. The young man, now a wealthy business tycoon who had taken over his adoptive dad's business, did the unthinkable as onlookers watched. Sis, I'm sorry, I know it's a small word compared to the struggles you endured, but I promise to make your days better from now on, he said, scooping an ailing David into his arms. Rackle was stunned and slowly rose, struggling to balance herself on a stick due to her limp. Jeremy gently wrapped his arm around her shoulder and said, let's go home. Warm tears streamed down Rackle's cheeks. For the first time in years, she cried tears of joy, her heart lightening as she felt her brother's comforting presence. That day, after 18 long and painful years of separation, Jeremy and Rackle were finally reunited. In addition to providing them with shelter in his luxurious home, Jeremy covered the costs of his nephew's medical treatment. He also hired a spa therapist to care for his sister and treated her to a makeover, erasing the visible reminders of the emotional scars she had carried throughout her life. In today's competitive world, most people are constantly chasing after money, but does that justify forgetting about their loved ones? Shouldn't siblings like Jeremy learn to value relationships and not trade their love for wealth? What are your thoughts on this story? I'd love to hear your opinions, so please share them in the comments section below. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more captivating stories. Stay tuned for our upcoming content. See you in the next video.